All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the anchor base. What I'll do is I'll start my 2D sketch. I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to do it on the YZ plane. And I'm going to sketch that side profile that you see in the drawing. And keep in mind, I'm going to sketch the profile. And then I'll come back through and dimension it after the fact here. So one thing that I'll do is this when this line's coming down, I'm going to make sure that this next line right here is uh, perpendicular. So 90 degrees. So that's one geometric constraint that I'm going to make sure that this object has. So bring my line up. Sketch this profile. There we go. So keep in mind, this is just a rough sketch. This is uh, nothing is sized up just yet. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, and there's these two things that I'm going to do is very important to this uh, design, making it work out successfully. I'm going to do a coincident constraint on this corner right here to the origin. I'm going to lock that into the origin like I just did. The other thing that I'm going to do, and when you look at the drawing, this point right here, it's very important that we keep this constrained to be horizontal to the origin, or not even necessarily the origin, but to this line right here. Now, we can imply that that's the case on the drawing because there's a center line that runs through that. So let me go ahead and I'll apply a horizontal constraint to this line. In fact, if you notice, when I do a horizontal constraint, notice how that dashed line's going vertical. So it depends on how our orientation is. So I'm actually going to do a vertical constraint, even though in my case it, it looks like it's, it's horizontal. So choose that line. It's actually saying that uh, I can't do that. So I'm going to choose the, uh, the point first and then make it horizontally constrained to, the, uh, to that line there. That's a very important step before we put dimensions on. So now that I have that all tied in, I can go ahead and put some dimensions in here. And I'm going to dimension this vertical line here to the origin. And I'll put that in to be 0.1. That's what the drawing says. And another dimension that we can do is down here we could dimension this. Now, if your dimension doesn't come up like mine is, you can right-click and you can change uh, the type of dimension that you have. I don't actually have that option right here, but you could choose to do an aligned dimension because mine's already aligned. Um, so we're, we're good to go there. But if it weren't aligned, you would want to choose that to be aligned. So go ahead and double click and so that you can edit that dimension and we're going to put in 0.35. Okay. All right. So couple other things here that we can do. We can choose this angle dimension right here to be 30 degrees. And the top angle here, we could choose this to be 20 degrees. And now this length right here, we can choose from this point to this line right here, we could choose this to be um, 1.5. Okay, all right, so I put this dimension in at 1.5 and it directs it down. Now, when I look at my, that on the drawing, these dimensions, that's all I'm given in, in the drawing. So what we gotta do is we gotta, in this view, I should say, what we have to do is look at the other view, the isometric view, and borrow some other dimensions that we need. So I'm going to dimension this horizontal line to this point right here. That is 0.25 is that dimension. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Notice down here it's saying one dimension is needed. So my next dimension, and I'm going to have to borrow this from the other view as well. I'm going to do this height from that horizontal line. That overall height there is 0.75. Okay. So now that brings my profile back into place. Everything looks good. I'm fully dimensioned, or fully constrained, rather, 
uh, down in the lower right corner and, it, and all my lines are locked in, they're all black. At this point I'm ready to finish my sketch and when I go do an extrude, I'll just do a symmetrical extrusion just because I've been getting used to doing that and the overall length is two inches. Okay, so we got that. That's what it looks like so far. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cutout in this area right here. So I'm going to do a 2D sketch on this particular surface right here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. So when I snap to these existing uh, portions of geometry, we don't have to worry about dimensioning everything. We do have to dimension the width. I'm going to go ahead and do a width dimension. And we'll do a little bit of math. So if it's the overall 2, the dimension that I'm given from this left side to here is inch and a half. So we're left with 0.5. So let's go ahead and type in 0.5 for this dimension. Notice how it's fully constrained. That's the only dimension we had to give because we're locked in to existing uh, geometry, projected geometry from the part. So let me finish sketch and extrude cut, change it to extrude cut through all, and we're good. Okay, now you'll notice that you know this isn't a square inside corner on the drawing, it has a fillet in there. There's a round on this corner, there's a round on this corner, and there's a round up here and up here. So if you were to count that all out, you're going to have five. So you got one, two, three, four, five uh, fillets and rounds. You'll notice on the drawing it says 5XR.25. Well, that's the information we need right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the fillet tool, type a radius of 0.25, and come in here and select that inside corner, these outside corners, and it'll put the round right on those parts. Hit OK. So I should have five of them. The drawing says 5x. So it means those fillets and rounds five times. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I have to put a slot through here, this surface, and I'll put a hole through here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the hole tool. And the diameter is going to be 0.5, which I could type that in right here, and it already is there. So I'm going to click on my surface to put the hole on. And then I'm going to click an edge to use for reference. Uh, the reference to this top edge is 0.5. And then I have a reference from this left side over here, and that comes up as 0.75 on the drawing. So we go ahead and locate it, hit OK, and that's our hole. I'm going to go ahead and do a slot up here, but I'm going to do it our traditional method of just simply um, doing a 2D sketch, start a 2D sketch on this surface, and draw two circles. And notice what I'll do. I'll draw two circles anywhere on my screen, and then come down and dimension the diameter. The diameter is going to be 0.3. So we could put in there 0.3 for the diameter. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect this with a line. I'm going to go 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, you know, 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Now one thing I didn't do, let's make sure that these center points are horizontal. And we lock those in horizontal, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and trim this inside arc out so that I'm left with a slot. And let's continue putting some dimensions on. I'll dimension from center to center. And it didn't pop up like I wanted. Go center to center. That dimension is given as 0.75. From the center to the left edge, that dimension is given as 0.5. Okay, so I'm trying to lock this in, and you'll notice that I need a height dimension. 
So let's go ahead and measure or put a dimension in from there to this bottom edge, and that's going to be 0.37. And look how it gets all haywire here, because whenever I trimmed it, it took out my tangent constraints. So let me go ahead and redo my tangent constraints. And once I do that, it locks it back in. Okay, all my dimensions, dimensional constraints are in place. Let's finish sketch. And go ahead and extrude, cut that out. Change it to cut through all. And there we go. We've got our slot, got our hole, we've got our fillets and rounds. That is the anchor base. And one last thing that we would need to do is change the material. We're going to change the material to lead on this case. Okay, go ahead and save it as anchor base and put it in your drawing. Thanks for watching.